Good morning, welcome to Canex TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Tuesday, May 6th, 2014. A very interesting story that's being uh, released in Britain. It hasn't really been picked up in the U.S. yet. It may amount to nothing, but we are forced to cover it. Members of a violent cell of Al-Qaeda-linked terrorists are being questioned in Malaysia now in connection with the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. This is according to several British press reports. International law enforcement agencies, including the FBI and Britain's MI6, ask Malaysian authorities to conduct, quote, intense interrogations of the 11 militants who range in age from 22 to 55 and include students, business professionals, as well as a young widow. This is according to the London Daily Mail. They were all arrested in Malaysia last week. According to an officer with the Counterterrorism Division in Malaysia, the arrests have increased concern that terrorists may have taken control of the plane. This officer went on to say the possibility that the plane was diverted by militants is still high on the list. The plane, of course, vanished two months ago with 239 people on board. About an hour ago at the White House, uh, a report on global warming was released. Flooded rail lines, bigger than frequent droughts, a rash of wildfire. These are some of the alarming predictions included in the climate change report. The climate change, according to the report, said once considered a issue for the distant future has now moved firmly into the present. Uh, one of the things that is different about this report is that it is no longer warning that climate change is coming. It has now shifted to helping Americans prepare for climate change, which is here now. Uh, some of the themes uh, talk about the huge amount of practical, usable knowledge that can be given to communities as they cope with the risks as, such as longer dry spells and increased risk for wildfire. Uh, a commentator said it begins to take the climate discussion down to a regional level, breaks the country apart, and anticipates what's going to happen in each region. That kind of information will help communities plan. In the densely populated Northeast, for example, flooded rail lines and other infrastructure are named as a concern when sea levels rise. The Great Plains will experience heavier droughts and heat waves with increasing frequency and more wildfires of greater intensity and longer duration will occur in the West. There's been an earthquake warning issued for the state of Oklahoma. Um, in a joint statement, the U.S. Geological Survey and the Oklahoma Geological Survey said that the risk of a damaging earthquake, one with an intensity greater than 5.0, has increased in central Oklahoma. This is the first time that the USGS has issued an earthquake warning for a state east of the Rockies. Authorities say that a large fire at a power plant in Colorado Springs, Colorado, uh, has now been effectively controlled. 62 employees were evacuated, no one was injured. Uh, the fire occurred at the uh, Colorado Springs Utilities plant at uh, the Martin Drake Power Plant. Uh, the uh, plant is going to be down for some time. It's going to cause the community to go out onto the open market and buy electricity off the grid. It's going to be very costly for them. They don't know how much yet. Endurance Specialty Holdings is considering increasing its offer to acquire rival reinsurer Aspen Insurance up to about $50 a share. This would be a price tag of $3.26 billion. Aspen, of course, rejected Endurance's initial offer of $47.50 a share. It's not known when the sweetened offer would be made, but the timing supposedly is not imminent. Endurance is scheduled to release first quarter earnings after the market close on Monday. Neither side uh, offered any comment. John Charman, the CEO and chairman of Endurance, is speaking on Thursday in New York at an event that I am attending, and I will attempt to see if I can ask him any pertinent questions about this, although I'm sure many people have already asked, and Mr. Charman is very adept at dealing with the press. The reinsurance division of London listed insurer and reinsurer Hiscox has put its money where its mouth is. Bronick Masajeda, the CEO, has often said he is not going to write reinsurance business that's underpriced. And in fact, their recent numbers that came out yesterday indicate that they have reduced their top line reinsurance premiums by 14.2%. So they are not writing business if the premium is not adequate. 
Meanwhile, the president and CEO of Renaissance Re in Bermuda, Kevin O'Donnell, said that at a macro level, there is evidence of discipline being lost in underwriting and risk being priced inadequately in the reinsurance market. He said at the macro level, we're starting to see undisciplined behavior with some risk being placed, being priced below an acceptable level of return for any form of capital. When asked where he saw the irrational behavior coming from, whether it was from traditional reinsurance companies or from insurance linked securities market players, O'Donnell insinuated that both are guilty. I think at this point, capacity is capacity and we are seeing stronger competition coming from all sectors, to be honest. O'Donnell is not the only person to suggest that pricing discipline is slipping. Earlier this week, the CEO of Validus, Ed Noonan, said that ILS market discipline is waning in Florida. Florida renewals for the hurricane period, of course, are right in front of us. They're really going to be starting in earnest next month. Last week, we reported about a major disruption at Los Angeles International Airport, causing the rerouting of about, about 400 flights going in and out of LAX. Uh, today, we're finding out that one of the possible reasons for this was that data from a U-2 spy plane's uh, flight plan uh, may have caused the antiquated software used by the FAA to screw up. The U-2, which flies at about 60,000 feet in altitude under visual flight rules, presented an anomaly to the computer. A plane that high usually does not use uh, visual flight rules, it uses instrument flight rules in an attempt to try to uh, rectify the issue by programming a, a visual flight rule for the, uh, an instrument flight rule for the U-2. The software exceeded its uh, memory capability and shut down. The Los Angeles Air Traffic Center was forced to reboot the software while an even older system uh, handled the flights to ensure that no flight ran into another flight. Warren Buffett at his uh, annual uh, event in Omaha last weekend that was attended by 40,000 Berkshire Hathaway shareholders and other interested people became one of the first insurance executives to comment publicly on the game-changing potential of self-driving cars, who would have thought it? Buffett said that the technology pioneered by Google, amongst others, could be, quote, a real threat to car insurers, including his own Geico car insurance business, if it reduced the number of traffic accidents. I hadn't thought of that. But then again, I don't have $55 billion, and I'm not as smart as Warren Buffett. Good thinking, Mr. Buffett. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, I'll come back and tell you. If not, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.